I'm Doth Savick, and this is my review for the Revolution Dual Pack. I paid full retail price for this bag, that's $229.99, and this bag weighs 1.7 kilos. That puts it in an interesting weight range for how much capacity this bag has. Other bags that are just a touch lighter than this are the Grip CS2 and the Prodigy BP2. If we look at bags just a touch heavier, then we're looking at the Pound Octo Hall and the Pound Carlton. Um, the Grip AX4, for example, is 1.98 kilos. That's so quite a bit heavier than this bag. And this thing is just a tank. It's got crazy capacity. This is this is my least favorite of the three bags from Revolution. I really want to love this thing. It's made in the USA. It's got some awesome fabrics used. But the execution, the overall design just leaves me wanting like a, a few changes on it. And that's kind of preventing it from sticking into the same tier that I look at both the Team Carolina and the um, Mini Deluxe, from, also from Revolution. Um, before we dig into all the details of this bag, I did go ahead and make another um, another intro for you guys, a dramatic, cinematic intro. Let's go ahead and roll it.
okay, maybe I got a little carried away with that one. I, it was kind of long. Uh, that's how long the track was, uh, the music that I picked for that. And, and, that, and the rest of it just kind of fell into pace. Um, I probably won't keep doing them that long, but I am enjoying them, and I hope I hope you guys are too. It's kind of fun. Uh, I don't know, like a commercial almost for the bag or something. But um, the I, I wasn't lying about how many discs I or how many putters I pulled out of the top. That's actually what I've got stacked in it right now, which is which is just ridiculous. I've got more than 30 discs in this right now. Of course, I I would never use it that way, but it is an interesting way to show off its capacity. Um, this is how I had it stacked in order to get all those in there. I have two set on top just like that. And, and then underneath straight across is 13. 13 putters. Like if you were doing mixed discs up there and you know you had some drivers and stuff, you could fit a whole lot more. I'm not gonna take them out just yet. Um, I, I wanna use the weight that I have up in there and uh, how full it is to, to show off some other things about this bag. Um, in, in the main disc area, I've got 16. Uh, six of those are mids. And then I've got 10, 10 drivers going the other way. That is with the plastic frame inserted, but the divider for that frame I've got pulled out. That eats up maybe one, one driver about um, the, the width of that divider, if you had it in place, is going to eat up about one disc. The number one criticism that I have for this bag is that it's not really fun to pull discs from the main compartment. You can see, uh, you know, we're kind of squished down. Uh, we got a low ceiling there, and uh, some of that is because of the amount of weight that I have, you know, 13 putters up on top currently, and I, I actually have some heavy stuff in this front pocket as well. But believe it or not, with all of those putters in there, this is actually one of the better ways to set it up. That That's actually filling the top enough that it's stopping it from, from really bowing in. Now, if I tilt this back a little bit, you can see that the edge of the putters and the top are setting on the top of the discs in this compartment. That is actually helping hold up the top some. So if I start pulling all these out, Things get a little more sketchy. So that I've pulled everything out of the main compartment. Um, I have phone wallet keys uh, in the front here, and and you can see now that it's that it's sagging even lower. It's just kind of unfortunate. Like there's there are so many things I like about this bag, but when you don't have great access to your main, you know, disc selection, it's hard for me to get over that. I if if this were my only bag and I was, you know, committed to running it, there's a couple modifications I would make. And that that can that can help with this. You know, for, for one, if I go ahead and remove the rest of the weight out of here, there's my phone, I got my keys, clipped in this nice keeper that they've got there, and, uh, and my wallet. You know, so if we've got, if we've got no, no weight in the top at all, then it, it does stand up pretty well. Even at that, you know, that is so much smaller than than the disc, right? So even, you know, to pull it, even without any weight coming down on that, uh, this just isn't designed with like a whole lot of access. Now a little bit of the visual there is because of this flap. Most bags, this flap goes the other way, right? Um, you know, you, you zip it the other direction and the flap hinges from the top and it gets tucked back. And for one reason or another, this one is is uh, hinged from the bottom. Now I have that tucked tucked in this way, which I think is the best. I like the aesthetic of still being able to see whatever uh, color texture pattern is on the fabric here. If you do if you do tuck it the other direction, that does give you the appearance of opening this main compartment a little bit more, and and you can tip tuck that right into the zipper 
aesthetically that just isn't as pleasing uh, to me to look at the back of this piece of fabric um, but it but it does make this opening look larger still you you can see we're pushing pretty hard on the zipper it's just a little bit of a fight and that tapers even further on the corners so you know if you've got a large diameter like a, a buzz over here um, that's just not that's not easy to get out it's it's really a fight to deal with discs um, in and out of the main compartment one of the tricks I started using is those large diameter discs like a, you know, a buzz or a habit. Um, I've, it, generally they would live over here near the edge. A comet is another one. In, instead on this bag, when I'm carrying it, I've been moving them to the middle. Um, that kind of messes up my understable to overstable way that I stack, but it is just easier to pull those tall discs when, when you're yanking them out of the middle compartment. The mod that I've tried to help this some was to take a piece of cardboard and, and cut it to the depth and width of that top section and then just drop it in there. That helps give it some support. An another thing that I think I would do is, is figure out how to hold this corner right here up higher. The plastic frame that we've got uh, in here only comes up this high so it is not pushing up to this corner which is a little weird that's a change that could be made to improve um, you know how much the top collapses down you can see this this comes down and, and then there is where is where I hit that hit that corner um, you could do a mod of plexiglass or you know some stiff panel to uh, go on the outside of that uh, frame system to help hold those corners up. If you kept this corner high and then also dropped a, a plate across the bottom, I think that it would really improve how well the, the top section stays up. Uh, that cardboard that I had in there, I ended up cutting it up and using it for backing on some discs I shipped out. Um, you know what? I'm going to go cut another one right now. Uh, hang with me. I'll be right back. Okay, cool. I got it. Uh, what I did was I just measured uh, from corner to corner here and then also from this corner to here and I cut out a piece of cardboard uh, just like really close to those measurements. Now, we'll go ahead and load this back up. What I'm going to do is put my wallet drop my keys onto that loop and put my phone in here and I'm not gonna put anything else in the top yet just just those things and you can see that you know just picking the bag up setting it back down the the weight of that stuff is really really pulling us down so we're at you know uh, three inches something like that for that for that opening now if I take that cardboard and slide it in and push it down to the bottom that immediately pull pulls us up quite a bit just from the little bit of weight in that front pocket you know we're up to four inches now this is definitely a pocket that you want to utilize there are not other great options especially for phone which I'll get to a little bit later uh, going down to these side pockets now of course you're not gonna run the top completely empty like one of the things that I really like doing with that top definitely not putting 15 putters in there but we'll fill some space with like a, a couple towels and then you know maybe four putters I've got like a couple putting putters two throwing putters up there and and that's kind of going to be my main putter slot I could fit you know I could fit a whole row of discs like if I'm throwing a a couple mids a couple fairways for the next few holes uh, I may just go ahead and slot those right in there as well and you can see that cardboard is still holding up pretty well it's keeping it's keeping that from totally dropping down and we still have we still do have a pretty good fight to, to pull a disc out of the main compartment. It's both like crushing pretty hard down here and pushing pretty hard up uh, in order to get those discs in and out. 
if you were to go to the next step and, and do a little mod on the side that, that gets into these corners and pushes them up as well, I, I think you're, you're really on your way then. I don't want to make a habit of talking about mods when I'm reviewing bags, but this is kind of an exception here. I feel like this main compartment is frustrating enough to use. The If you're of that critical mindset at all, you're probably going to be thinking about modding this. And, you know, if you're watching this video before buying it, you're going to have to figure that out before you purchase the bag, whether whether you're willing to make a couple mods uh, to try to get that to stand up, or uh, maybe Revolution will address this. I think that, uh, you know, I, ideally I'd like to drop this frame system altogether. But this bag is not usable without it. If if I pull that frame system, which I've done, I've used the bag without it, then it, it just completely collapses. Even with a cardboard or something in there, there's nothing stopping that top from dropping. It would take a pretty major redesign on this bag to get, you know, plastic uh, fins going the full length in the side. But I think that's what would really take this bag to the next level. If they figured out a way to put in a little bit of stiffener on both sides and a stiffener in the back, that's probably what would be needed to just shape the whole thing up. I'd pay another hundred bucks for this easy, uh, just because the rest of the, like the fabric and the capacity is just it's so it's so great. But uh, that that's enough about that. I won't talk about um, that opening anymore or modding the bag. Let's take a look at everything else we've got here. Uh, you've you noticed I've got a mini marker stuck in here. That's one of the better spots for a mini. I'm not sure really what else you'd use this for. Maybe a little bit of scorecard you could tuck in there. You could drop a Sharpie, pencils, um, you know, a lighter, whatever other little little things you might have, dog poop bag, something like that. And you can zip it right over to pinch on your mini and that works pretty well. Now, one of the things that really separates, again, the Carolina bag, from this one is, is this section right here, this side pocket. On the Carolina bag, the pocket here is much wider. You can see there's a little bit of extra real estate here, there's a little bit of extra real estate there, and that's making up, uh, that, or making this pocket shrunk a little bit more than what we get on the Carolina. That's not too big of a deal. I honestly didn't notice that difference as far as like interior space on those pockets, but I really noticed the difference in how much room there is next to the water bottle. Um, for one, you can see that on the Carolina, there's a little bit of extra uh, material or uh, webbing sewn on there. So we can do Sharpie uh, pencils kind of disappear in there. I've actually got three small pencils in there right now and you can't quite see them. They just fall a little bit too short, uh, but, but that doesn't exist here. And this is just the right width that I can drop my phone in. Like that's, that's such a great spot for my phone to drop in. And I can't do that. I can't do that on the uh, on the dual pack. My phone will not fit in there. It's just like eh, like that that would be sweet. Like if they could just take you know pull this over a little bit further and make it wrap the bottle more and and then allow people to drop their cell phones in there. That that would be great for how tight it is, but how tall it is. I'm kind of like at a loss as for what to use that for. You know, uh, Sharpie. Sharpie works just fine. But other than that, I don't know what you're gonna fit in there. Like even my low profile uh, wallet is not gonna is not gonna drop in there. These cup holders do have grommet on the bottom, and they fit a you know Nalgene full size bottle. No, no trouble at all. This bag actually has a waist belt on it which I've not like done any hikes or anything where I need to clip that on. Potentially would even, I could see some people cutting them off just to get rid of that extra, you know, webbing hanging around. I've just been tucking, tucking them in and, you know, dropping my bottle or can or whatever on top of it. And, and that's not caused me any issues just to keep it dressed up that way. Having said that this pocket is smaller than the Team Carolina bag, 
it is still massive. Like you can you can fit so much stuff in here. Like here I've got a rangefinder, water bowl for my dog, hand sanitizer, sunblock, and then my little bag with bag tags, dog poop bags, lighter, all the extra little things. And and that wasn't even coming close to to filling this pocket up. It is a little weird how the this this pocket is attached to the main bag. We've they've got a little funny fold here on the bottom. You can see it doesn't come down to like a hard corner and then and then meet another piece of fabric. Uh, this vertical wall is wrapped underneath and tucks. That kind of gives us well for one you can see the severe angle that that water bottle is leaning out on that that aids in that angle and then if you're trying to stack this pocket with like 12 ounce cans for example they they stack in there a little weird they don't want to sit straight down they're you know coming up on an angle but still you can fit uh, there's there's three and there's they're starting to Kind of go at a little bit of we weird angles as you can see i can fit five in here that's what i'm what i'm getting to um at a, at a little bit at a little bit odd angles and that just isn't as satisfying as like the uh, if you watch my review of the mini deluxe from revolution six pack just like perfect like it's made for it and here it's like really awkward five uh, so I don't know. It's 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 a little bit funky. You do have these. I want to call them a compression strap uh, across the top of the upper pocket. You've got one of these on both sides. The different stuff that I've stacked in the top. This doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference. Like, you know, cranking that down tight doesn't seem to like help lift the top up. It's, it still seems to sag regardless of whether I have the cinch down. I think that like even having like said, I want to call it a compression strap, its use really is more likely if you're trying to carry an umbrella or a stool. And in either of those scenarios, you're, you're either gonna unzip this pocket and poke your umbrella or stool legs down through there or uh, like retrievers, another thing you might have in there, or you're going to poke the other end of it uh, down into this pocket or into here. Actually, this could work really well for the catching the bottom end of an umbrella or a retriever. You're not going to get three stool legs in there, maybe one stool leg. But if you're stacking things out that direction and then trying to cinch it down, you're also kind of crushing what's in the side here. So those are the sorts of trade-offs, I guess, you gotta you got to make. Uh, comment on these zippers. These are just bomber. Like the zippers are so big. We got huge zipper pulls, huge zippers. I have the feeling that like you can't destroy this. You know, you're you're not going to be able to chew through these zippers. Uh, the fabric, the stitching. Like I just want. I really want to love this bag for those for those types of reasons. We've got little tabs all over the place. If you want to strap this thing down to a cart or hang, you know, different bag tags and stuff like that off of it, you just have these, these tabs are all over the place. You have so many places and, and they're like, they're stitched in really well. Like they could take, they could take a beating. You do not have like a super beefy haul loop. This is, uh, What's the term? There's like a webbing that it has a looped all the way around, tubular webbing, and that's not, this isn't even that. Uh, this is really just single. This is super thin. It's not like a luxurious uh, hull loop in any way. One of the more interesting things about this bag is the choice in the fabric that they've put on the back. This is, a, I don't know what to call it. It's a non-woven, like this is the material you'd see on a reusable grocery bag. Like that, that kind of soft, that softer material. It does, it feels nice because it's soft, but it does not give me the vibe of a super durable premium fabric like the uh, Cordura uh, 1000 or 500 denier or whatever, 600 denier or whatever Cordura this is on the rest of the bag. I just don't get that that feel on the fabric used on the back.
I'm no expert in fabric. I can't like really, you know, truly comment on its durability, but that's kind of the vibe it gives me. This bag with a dual pack name, I think that the name dual really comes from the fact that it's like a single bag across the bottom and then on the top it's just another bag dropped on and sewn. And that's kind of revealed as we have that seam across the back of the bag. That aids a little bit in the top wanting to just pivot forward. At that, at that seam, below it we've got a thick piece of foam padding, and then above it we've got a separate piece of foam padding. So it will hinge right there. You know, granted I've still got that cardboard in there so it's not, it's not going to do it a whole lot, but the whole top of the bag will pivot off of that point and then, and then sink down. That's why I mentioned earlier about, you know, possibly having a stiff panel back there. The backpack straps on this are pretty well done. The padding is super thick. I love how it feels on the shoulders. The soft fabric, uh, the open weave underneath here is pretty, pretty common for this style strap. Interestingly, the sternum strap that they've put on here is not adjustable. And while that may look like the sternum strap is attached nice and low down the straps, the reality is that the, like the padded portion actually stops short. It does, you know, a lot of bags that's that's coming way down here. Uh, so because of that, this attachment point for the sternum strap is actually really high. I feel like I wear my bag height-wise on my back about the same as most people. It'll touch, you know, it'll touch my low back uh, lumbar area. And when I wear this bag in that spot, this, this sternum strap, if I buckle it, no kidding, it touches my throat. And yeah, just uh, poor choice for at least how I think most people wear their bag. So if this was my permanent bag and I was, you know, modding a little bit, those are getting cut just right off. There's no way I would ever use that sternum strap because it rides, it rides way too high for me. Coming around to the other side, um, this water bottle, again, you can see hanging out on a pretty serious angle. Part of that is because I have this just packed over here. Um, to, just to give you an idea of, you know, again, even though I called this smaller pocket than what you get on the Team Carolina, which is true, it still holds a lot. Here is a full size large hoodie. Like this is not a small hoodie, that is massive. And I had it fitting in there, no problem. Now you can do discs over there too. Like if you if you don't want to mess with cardboard up here, uh, if you want to put phone wallet keys and everything in this side pocket over here and, and just not use the top or put nothing up there, uh, then, then you can totally run putters or uh, you know some other discs off on the side. There's three three putters in there. And I use that that side pocket on the Team Carolina bag, for example, I use that for putters all of the time. Another option that you've got for putters or whatever easy access discs is to use this pocket here. Instead of, you know, phone wallet keys, you can put a putter in there and that just fits about perfectly. And you can stack a second one behind it. Now again, those are being held up. I still do have that, that cardboard in there, so that's, that's helping us out. Um, two discs right there is enough to make that front just, just cave. What have I not covered? Bottom. The bottom of this bag, I did mention, you know, we've got uh, these little grommets, drain holes for the drink holders. And then the main fabric across the bottom, they're calling this a truck tarp material. It is like a super heavy duty, rubberized, woven feeling material. Um, it could take a beating for sure. Definitely a little bit of concern with the hard plastic frame in there. It's taking all of the weight of your discs and putting it right onto the edges. You know, that is something, if you look at pictures of older Revolution bags, and I'm talking ones that have been in use for a decade or so, you m you'll you see some of those corners fraying from that. This is what that divider system, frame system looks like. I've got a second one. It's the same system that comes with the Carolina bag. You know, again, the divider I have removed. 
<clears throat> for, for this setup here. Uh, this is what the divider would look like. Now, I did a, I've got a VOD where I unboxed these, and you might want to go watch that if you're looking at, you know, trying to figure out how to assemble this thing. I'll give you the quick version of it right now. It took me like 15 minutes or something in the VOD to get it to get it squared away and figured out. But you want to assemble it just like this. Uh, go ahead and put both rails and, and jam them into one of the side panels. And then this is the time where you decide whether you want to use this divider or not. You know, slide it off, take it off, uh, or, or leave it there. And then you fish this into the bag, that direction, and then lay it flat. Now here's the real key. When you bring this second piece in, what, what really caused me a lot of grief was trying to load the top first and press it together that way and then rocker the bottom on. That is a nightmare. I battled with it so long. Like you'll, you'll get a chuckle out of it if you want to go watch the VOD. And what I, what I finally realized is after getting that in and, and you know, fishing this piece in, um, you don't go top and then rock or bottom on. You've got to pull it wide, um, seat, the, seat the bottom first, and, and then rocker the top on. And it is so much easier. Uh, it's so much easier to get it assembled that way but it's, it's, still, it's still a little bit of a fight. Revolution has done a great job of offering different color combinations. You know, this one I've got the full decked out digital camera, but they do give you, like when you're looking at them on uh, gotta go, gotta throw .com or uh, Infinite, uh, somebody sent me a message and said Infinite's carrying these now, and I checked, yeah, they do have them. You can get three different colors per bag in, you know, set configurations that they've already had made and ordered. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's a little better than like what you, options you get with grip. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going to buy a grip bag. You go on their website and you're like, mm, they got two or three color combinations. You know, it's, it's neat that Revolution, uh, that Gotta Go is ordered uh, enough different bags that, you know, you can get the black with the red with the blue uh, or different, you know, camo combinations. So it, there's a lot to choose from. It, it lets you feel that you've got a little bit more of a unique bag when you get to choose your colors that way. I kind of hope that this bag does get some more tweaks over time. Um, it would, like when I unboxed these, I was like, this is like the holy trinity. Like, I can't believe, you know, the quality on the fabrics is so high and it's made in the U.S. Like, I love it. And then using this bag, I'm kind of like, okay, this is a completely different tier than the other two. And with, with some of those tweaks, I think it, it could be right back up there. Like, this could just be one of the most excellent bags. But it's fallen a little bit short for me. So um, I think it could still be a great bag for, for many people. Like the capacity is insane. If you, you know, remember I had 15 up top, 16 down here. And then I showed putting three putters in the side. You could fit four drivers over there. You can push over 40 discs in this bag. Like that is insane. Not many bags can make that claim. You know, much less if you wanted to load cans or something on top. Like the options that you have are just wild. Uh, no, no rain fly. I have had, I've not carried this one in the rain, but I've carried the other two Revolution bags for a number of actually wet and rainy and snowy rounds now, and have been really impressed at uh, how the fabric does have water just beating, and I've not gotten nearly, my stuff has not gotten nearly as wet as I thought it would, so I actually wouldn't hesitate to bring this out in, in some rain, even without a rain fly. That's all I got today for this bag. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you want to see more like it, um, feel free to scroll down, look in the description. I'll drop the link from my Patreon. Uh, give me the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I any of those, all of the above helps an awful lot. And uh, I thanks, thank you for watching to the end here. We'll see you in the next video. You tell that dog to stop barking, Lola. It's messing with my messing with my vibe.